You might have seen an animation on my channel recently called You Are The Key. This is the scene that I used to create that animation. And if you're wondering about any of the textures in that scene, here's a little insight into how they were made. So the wood texture is unique in that the roughness map for it is different than the rest of the texture. Usually when you look at texture images, you can see that they are all clearly of the same image. This one, interestingly, the roughness map does not look like the others. It's this blotchy look, which is cool for being able to make this look as if wood has had the clear coat worn off over time in spots. So if we, if we use one of the benefits of Node Wrangler, which if you don't have Node Wrangler turned on, strongly recommend you go to Preferences, go to Add-ons, search Node, and turn on Node Wrangler. So one of the things you can do is hold Control, Shift, and left click on a node and see just that node exclusively what it contributes to the principal shader. So if you look at the base color, and then we do that same thing on the roughness, you can see the roughness map is really different than that base color image or the normal map. Uh, it doesn't have the wood grain running through the wood. It really just has just this blotchy stuff going on. So that was perfect for getting that kind of look. If we control shift left click on the principled node, we'll just see everything connected again. So the roughness map when filtered through a color ramp gave me the ability to control how big those shiny areas were, uh, how big the dull areas were, and uh, the weathered look of the door. And then using the ambient occlusion map with a multiply node, keeping the ambient occlusion texture set to sRGB instead of non-color, keep it at sRGB, use a multiply node to factor it in, and you can see what that contributes. Uh, good spots to look for it are spots like this where there's the surface worn away and you can see a shadow. Watch the shadow disappear as we lower the factor for the ambient occlusion. You can see how much that really affects the texture. It's, it can kind of look very flat and not that interesting. And then you add ambient occlusion, and it's subtle, but it makes a big difference in uh, assisting that shadowed look of the, the normal map. You know, combined with the normal map, it really does a great job. So... Controlling the roughness map with a color ramp and factoring in ambient occlusion were really the only things that took this texture to this point versus just putting in like a base color, the base roughness, and the normal map. So if we click on the color ramp and press M to mute it, you can see the roughness map just contributing its roughness by itself uh, did not look that great. But when we use the color ramp to tweak it, we really can, can make cool, shiny, and dull spots on the wood with that color ramp. This is a pretty good angle right here to see it. And color ramps are just an essential tool in texturing. You really need to use those uh, to just tweak things from their base form and get get what you're looking for so that is really all I did uh, for that wood and then the plaster is even simpler if we look at the plaster it's the color the ambient occlusion the roughness and the normal we're not even using a color ramp anywhere to tweak it the only special thing is the ambient occlusion really and again in these shadowy areas right at this edge of the wear. If we take that ambient occlusion away, you can see the, the difference, it's huge. Even in all these little divots, all these places that the shadow comes out. 
So if you're not using ambient occlusion maps, uh, this is the easiest way to use them. They really do make textures look a lot different, a lot more realistic. All they are is, uh, all it is is the ambient occlusion map if the texture offers one set to sRGB and then a color mix RGB set to multiply. The base color is color one, the ambient occlusion is color two, and the color goes into the base color. And then you just pump this factor up to one. That's it. So hopefully that's insightful nothing too fancy going on there and uh, if you wanted to do it with a different wood texture that did not have its own uh, the, as far as the shininess goes if you wanted to do that with something that had a roughness map that didn't give you this ability you just use a musgrave texture instead and um, let's take a look now at how to do that Take a wood texture that you, you have currently and add it in here. I'm going to use this Hungarian parquet. I'm going to switch over to viewport shading. You can see the wood there. That's uh, pretty plain Jane. Let's add the normal map. And then let's add the roughness map. Now, instead of using this roughness map, which if we plug this in, you can see that's all it does. If we mute it, it's not really contributing much. It's not really doing anything. If we do control shift left click on it, you can see this roughness map is just a shade of gray. It's just kind of giving the whole thing a general level of shininess, which you could tweak further through a color ramp. But uh, for our purposes of making some kind of wood that looks like worn out in places, this thing won't be very helpful. So we're gonna add in just a Musgrave texture we're going to plug that into the roughness. We'll control shift left click on it so we can see just that. And then we can play with the scale. Play with the detail. And play with the dimension. Lucanarity I leave alone. Just adjust these three and then you can get these areas where there's going to be shininess and dullness. Now if you wanted to adjust it further, add in a color ramp and then tweak the black and white and you can get whatever look you're going for. You can adjust the color of the black, make it a little more dull, and then it'll look a little less like water spilled on the floor and a little bit more like this. The floor has shiny and dull spots. And that that's another really easy way to get that kind of look over wood or any type of surface, really. I mean, you could do that to metal, you could do it to concrete, you could do it to glass, and it'll give you this look like some areas have wear or stain or the clear coat has rubbed off, something like that, you know. And um, that's it. Another useful tip, if you don't know, if you want to clean up your node tree a little bit, you can highlight a group of nodes and press Shift equal sign.
Node Wrangler will just line them all up nicely for you. It's a good way to just some kind of, sometimes kind of straighten things out. So let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Uh, hopefully this helped you out a little bit. There's nothing super complicated. And uh, I would be honored and humbled if the little bit of knowledge that I know in Blender has helped you out at all on your journey. And if you found any of this to be really too simple and straightforward and stuff you already knew, um, that's a great part of your Blender journey. It's always cool to find something on YouTube and say like, I can do better than that. So hopefully you're in either of those positions. Either you already know how to do this and stuff better than this, or uh, you found this helpful and now you can use this and build on it. Thanks very much for watching, and good luck in your Blender journey, and have a great day.